Hello, I'm Lily Miao. I'm a PhD student come from Indiana University. Today, I will present our result on national scientific development. It is widely believed more than economic growth is driven by science and technology innovation. Researchers have been advocating investing on science, thinks science will create the future industry and will bring good jobs. One of the well-known example is the Genome Project. Federal government invested $38 billion to this project, and the economic impact of the project is at least $700 billion. So we know science is crucial to economic, but do we know what drives scientific development? Let's see what classical theories say about scientific development. August Kant believes science follows its innate order that it starts from astronomy and mathematics and end up with social science. George Basala proposed a three-step model for West, non-Western countries to develop their own science. At first, non-Western countries started from provide, provide geographical and natural resource to Western countries and then they build the scientific system with the knowledge and skills exported from Western countries. At last, they developed their own scientific culture and tradition. Okay, how can we empirically study national scientific development? Inspired by the product space work. Here, we study national scientific development from the knowledge export. Our data comes from Web of Science, we inferred country information of publication from their affiliation information and discipline information from the classification of journals. We used reviewed comparative advantage to characterize country's disciplinary advantage. If a country produces a greater share of its publication in a field compared to the world average in the discipline, the RCA value would larger than 1 and country C is considered to have advantage in discipline I. Here, colored countries represent they have advantage in the discipline. We see countries have advantage in tropical medicine are located around tropical area. Cancer research is largely concentrated in rich countries. Large emerging countries like China show advantage in industrial engineering. The special distribution of disciplinary specialization suggests scientific production is affected by geographic, historical, social, and economic factors. We wonder, do these factors govern national scientific production? In the product space, researchers showed industrialized countries produce more core products, while less advanced countries can only produce these peripheral products. How about scientific development? Similar with the product space, we constructed a knowledge network where nodes are disciplines and edge weight represent the similarity between disciplines. By filtering out those edges with small weights, we extracted the structure of knowledge space. The knowledge space exhibits three clusters. The first cluster is formed by natural resource demanding disciplines such as botany, tropical medicine. The second cluster is formed by applied science disciplines such as chemistry, physics. The third cluster is formed by social science related disciplines. Let's look at several examples at country level. Scientific production in Indonesia is mainly focused on resource cluster. Not a surprise, China mainly focuses on applied cluster. United States shows great advantage in social science cluster. We mapped the three clusters into the simplex. Country located close to the corner represent country has more production advantage in the corresponding cluster. Here, countries are aggregated by their income group. We find low-income countries, they tend to produce more natural resource-related knowledge. Middle-income countries, they tend to show advantage in both resource cluster and applied science cluster. 
high-income countries, they have more diverse research profile that they are located in the middle of simplex. Will they also show advantage in social science cluster? In the product space, countries are more likely to move to this product. They already have the related skills. For instance, if a country is producing apples, it is more likely the country produce other fruits instead of computers. So countries cannot randomly jump to a new space. Can we find the similar pattern in knowledge production? Here we calculated the nastiness, the relatedness by measuring average density of discipline based on country's current production profile. The average density measures that for a disadvantaged discipline, how many neighbors are advantaged in the current profile. And the closeness with the neighbors is weighted by the similarity between two disciplines. For example, discipline P has higher density than discipline I. And we found, yes, as density increases, the probability the discipline will be advantaged also increases. This means countries are moving towards their familiar research domains. If a country is producing knowledge in botany, it is more likely the country produce knowledge in tropical medicine. Furthermore, the relatedness rule is not homogeneous among countries. Low-income countries are more influenced by their research profile, which is to say the research advantage of low-income countries is more predictable. The cluster structure we reviewed share some similarity with the hierarchical structure proposed by the August Count that scientific development starts from those observational science and end up with social science. Can we empirically test this transition pattern? Actually, we observed most countries don't experience the transition from resource to applied to social science. Instead, they start from resource cluster and the state in resource cluster. The countries start from social science cluster and end up with social science cluster have the lowest GDP growth rate. Countries transit from resource cluster to applied cluster have the highest GDP growth rate. What happens when countries update their research profile? We find the increased advantage in resource cluster is negatively correlated with GDP growth. Increase in applied science is positively correlated with GDP growth, while change in social science cluster is not strongly correlated with GDP growth. The complexity of country's economy can be measured by the products they export, and the complexity of economic system correlates with its income level. We wonder, can we measure the complexity of country's scientific system? Here, we use Gini index to characterize national scientific diversity. For instance, the country have even distribution of RCA would have low Gini value. We use one minus Gini to represent scientific diversity. We found European countries and North American countries have more diverse research profile, while African countries and South American countries have more unbalanced research profile. That this looks like GDP distribution, right? Yes, we found scientific diversity is positively correlated with GDP and economic complexity. We reviewed the scientific gap between Western countries and non-Western countries, and the product space also show core peripheral structure, which also remind us Basler's work that Western countries are the core countries when modern science is spreading to other non-Western countries. Does global science exhibit the core peripheral structure? We investigate the core periphery by measuring the nastiness. If global science show nested structure, that means scientific lagging countries only produce a subset of advanced countries profile. Contrast to the nastiness, country can occupy different disciplines which are called specialization. Here, in the figure A, each row represents a country and column represents a discipline. Colored cell indicate the country has advantage in that discipline. We see 
At beginning, global science shows nested structure. As the lagging countries are catching up, the nested structure disappeared. This pattern is confirmed by the statistical test. However, global science shows stronger global specialization trend over time. Some countries heavily increased in resource cluster, some countries increased in applied science cluster. Okay, so far we found geographical, historical, and economic factors are shaping national scientific production. National scientific production space exhibit three clusters, and the cluster structure condition national scientific development. Poor countries are more limited by the knowledge space and its current research profile. Progress in applied science is positively correlated with GDP growth rate. Scientific diversity is positively correlated with countries' economic conditions. Global science is becoming more specialized over time. That's our result. Thank you for listening, and thanks to my team members.